everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always begin in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look through the cosmonoculars and find out who we're meeting today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. Ooh, look at the colours. Spinning around and the patterns. Ooh, ooh, can you see that? Oh my goodness, it's... It's Ruby Broom! What's Ruby doing? She's doing yoga. Ruby's doing crow pose. Cool. Wow, this is exciting. Today we have a special Halloween story. Ruby Broom is a little girl with a difference. She and her family are in fact witches and wizards. <laughs> so Halloween is a rather special time for them. Now Ruby is nine years old and she lives with her mum, her dad, her pet dog Pickles in a lovely house. Coming up to stand in house pose. Taking your feet wide, your arms wide and bring them up above your head. Now Ruby's pet dog Pickles is a magic dog. Let's come into dog pose. Down onto your hands and your knees. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up to the sky. And let's woof like a dog. Woof, 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 woof. Now lift up one of your legs and give it a wag like you're wagging your tail. When Pickles does this, lots of treats fall out of the sky. Woof, 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 woof. And lowering your leg back down and lift your other leg up and wag it the other way. When he wags it the other way, lots of balls fall from the sky. Woof, 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 woof and lowering your leg all the way down and coming down to your knees. Now Ruby's mum loves whizzing around on her broomstick. Let's come into broomstick pose. Lying on our tummies everyone, taking your arms down by your sides and after three let's lift up our legs, our arms and our chest. Ready? One, two, three. Whoosh! Like a broomstick, woohoo! Coming up to sit with your legs crossed. Now Ruby's mum is very good at keeping the house absolutely spotlessly clean and she never lifts a finger. All she does is mutter a spell. She twitches her nose and she does a big blow all over the house. <gasps> and the whole place is spick and span. Hm. Now Ruby's dad, being a wizard, loves spinning around in his cape. Coming up to stand, everyone, taking your feet wide and your arms wide. Now begin to spin. He loves doing this, and when he closes his eyes and he spins, the lawn magically cuts itself. Cool! And bringing yourself to stop. Now Ruby has also been practicing her magic. Recently she's been turning everyday objects into animals, like the lamp for example. Coming into lamp pose, bringing your feet together and turning your toes out. Now take your arms wide and bring your fingers up above your head to touch, like you've got a lampshade for a head, yes. She managed to turn the lamp into a frog. Let's come into frog pose. Bending your knees all the way down and using your fingers for balance. Let's do a one, two, three ribbit jump in the air. Ready? One, two, three, ribbit. Wow, well done everyone. The only problem is the frog still had a lampshade for a head. Take your hands out to the side and bring your fingers up above your head. She still needed to practice. Hmm. She'd also managed to turn her pencils into snakes. Let's come into snake pose. Come into lie on your tummies, everyone, and take your hands underneath your shoulders. Now wiggle, wiggle, wiggle yourself all the way up into snake pose with a The only problem was the snakes still had pencil lead heads, so they made a right mess scribbling all over the walls. Hmm. Sitting back on your heels. 
Now everyone was getting rather excited because it was coming up to Halloween. Everyone apart from Ruby, who was having a really hard time at school. All of her friends wanted to go trick-or-treating and dress up as really horrible warty witches. Coming up to stand, everyone, and let's do our warty witch pose. Oh, maybe standing on one toe. And make your mouth go all gummy and your fingers all craggy and maybe closing your eye and sticking out your tongue. <laughs> standing with her hands on her hips, Ruby didn't think this was at all fair. Not all witches are horrible like that. Some are rather beautiful, like my mum. She looks as graceful as a dancer when she rides on her broomstick. And she showed them with a dancer pose. Reaching your arm all the way up and taking your hand to the side. Now seeing if you can balance on one leg. Whoop, try not to wobble. And hold your foot. Now kick, kick, kick your foot into your hand. Lifting it up above your head. Yes, yeah, seeing if you can come into your dancer pose. Fantastic. And lowering yourself back down. Well done, everyone. Ruby's friends thought this was the funniest thing they'd heard all year and they rolled around on their backs like happy babies. Coming to lie on your back, everyone, and bring your knees into your armpits and hold on to your feet. And now let's laugh like a happy baby. <laughs> oh, Ruby. Ruby thinks she's a real witch. Well, she's just as horrible and ugly as a real witch. <gasps> Coming up to sit, everyone. Ruby was really rather upset by this. And later on that evening, she got onto her bed in her bedroom and she hugged her knees, feeling really sad. She cried to her mum, I wish I wasn't a witch. It's not fair. Nobody likes witches. Now, Ruby's mum tried to explain that actually being a witch is pretty cool. And then she turned herself into a lovely, nuzzly black cat. Coming into your cat pose, everyone. Onto your hands and your knees. Now, arcing your spine, looking into your tummy. Yes. And then dipping your belly down and wiggle waggling your tail to go meow. She sat back on her heels, opened her arms wide, and she gave her daughter Ruby the biggest cuddle ever. Wrapping your arms around. Oh, it'll be okay. And lowering your hands to your lap. Finally. It was Halloween night and everyone was very excited. The Broom family had the best decorations in the whole neighbourhood. They even had a whole group of skeletons dancing a jig on the front lawn. Oh, what's happening? The skeletons are here. Come on, everyone. Let's be skeletons dancing a jig. Let's stand up and dance. Here we go. was crazy. Well done, everyone. There was also a giant spider sat on the lawn. Let's come into spider pose. Taking your legs nice and wide, bend your knees and bring your hands down in between your feet. Now ticka 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 your fingers round the back and to the outsides of your feet, shuffling in your legs, making yourself into your spider pose. Now this spider was playing its leg like a cello. Sitting on your bottoms, everyone, and bring one of your feet in. Take hold of the other foot and stretch it up as straight as it'll go. Now use your other arm for a bow and play your spider cello. <laughs> now, the kids from Ruby's school thought that the Broom family decorations were incredibly real, especially as they approached the front door and it opened by itself. Let's come into door pose. Up onto two knees, everyone, and take your leg to the side. Reach your arm up high and let's creak like a haunted door. They'd come to collect Ruby to go trick-or-treating down the street. But Ruby was up in her bedroom 
reading a book. Sitting on your bottoms, joining the soles of your feet together and take your knees out to the side, flapping them like the pages of the book. She was also listening to music with her earbuds in her ears. A song all about the summer because she wanted to pretend it wasn't Halloween. Summertime, I love the summer, yeah. Sun and summer, ooh, 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 ooh. But Ruby's mum really thought that Ruby ought to go trick-or-treating with her friends. She was a real witch after all. So with a twitch of her nose... <coughs> Ruby was standing like a mountain by the door. Coming up to stand, everyone, in your mountain pose. Nice and strong, arms down by your side. Ruby was even holding one of those mini cauldrons to collect her treats with. Hm. Now, before she left, Ruby's mum folded halfway forwards to whisper something into Ruby's ear. And then she stood up. Hmm, we wonder what on earth she could have said. Everything was going amazingly and they were collecting lots of treats in their little mini cauldrons. Coming into your cauldron pose, lying on your tummies, everyone, and bring your feet towards your bottom. Reach around to grab your ankles and breathe in to lift yourself up. Ready? Kicking your feet into your hands. Yes, well done, everyone. Now, then they got to Mr Snell's house, number five, and everything went downhill from there. Let's come into our house pose. Coming up to stand with your feet wide and your arms wide and your hands above your head. Now, Mr Snell really didn't like children. He liked to poke them with his walking stick if they came too close. Turning your foot to the side and your arms out wide. Lean over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke then coming back up to stand. Bring your toes forward and turn your other toes out to the other side. Lean out over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke. Coming all the way up to stand, bringing your toes to the front. Now grab opposite elbows, because when they came a-calling, saying trick or treat, Mr Snell opened the mini window in his door, lifting up your arms above your head and showing me your best Mr Snell grumpy face. Ready? What do you want? Trick or treat? <laughs> I'll take the trick. You kids don't deserve any treats. You don't scare me. You're just a bunch of silly kids. Lowering your arms all the way down, everyone. The friends didn't know what to do and looked from side to side at each other. Who was going to do the trick? But Ruby knew what to do and she stepped forwards. She looked at Mr Snell. And she remembered the words her mother had said to her earlier, an old broom family spell. She muttered the words now. And she took a big deep breath in through her nose. And she blew Mr Snell a kiss. Ruby's friends were amazed because Mr Snell wasn't Mr. Snell anymore. Slowly lowering yourself all the way down, everyone. Mr. Snell had turned into a tiny little brown fluffy hamster. Coming into hamster pose. Onto your knees, everyone, and tuck yourself up into a little fluffy hamster ball. Squeak, 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 squeak. Sitting all the way up. Now Ruby went into a little squat position to talk to Mr Snell the hamster. Taking your feet wide and bending your knees deep and snuggling your arms in, bringing your hands to touch at your heart. Yes. Yes, Mr Snell, how do you feel about your trick? Are you happy being a hamster? Mr Snell begged Ruby. He said, sorry, 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 please turn him back into a man. And Ruby took pity. So she said her spell again. She took a big deep breath in through her nose and she blew Mr Snell the hamster a kiss. Slowly rising, Mr Snell grew back up from a hamster to being a man and up on his tiptoes he scuttled into the kitchen to grab arms full of treats. Then he folded halfway forwards and he gave them out to all the children saying, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. 
Ruby stood up. Now Ruby's friends had a newfound respect for Ruby and for witches. Perhaps they won't be so quick to laugh at someone for being different to them. Ruby felt proud for being just as she was, one of a kind, a witch, Ruby Broom. And that was the best feeling in the world. Oh, after all that trick or treating though, we have a little lie down. Let's have a lie down now on our backs with our legs out long and our arms down by our sides. Wow, what a great fun story. Trick or treating with a real life witch. Now Ruby was having a hard time because she was worried about what her friends thought about her. She wanted to be like them, to fit in and not be different when actually her differences were what makes her special. Just like all of us, each and every one of us is different and wonderful for those differences. We should celebrate our differences and we should be accepting of others when they're different to us. The world will be a much richer, more wonderful place for that. So breathe into exactly who you are Love yourself for being one of a kind, for being unique, for being you. And love others for being different, for being them. Slowly we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We bring our knees into our chest and we roll over onto our side, opening our eyes, pressing ourselves up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and that was so much fun trick or treating with you. I'll see you again soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye bye. Don't forget to join me on Saturday morning for Saturday morning yoga. Get everyone at home together and enjoy some family time. Remember, subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss one. I'll see you Saturday. Hello everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now we're ready to begin. So let's have a little look through our cosminoculars, thumbs and fingers together, and see what our adventure is about today. Have a look through. <gasps> wow! Can you see that? That looks amazing! All those colours, those shapes! Cool! Ooh, can you see it? It's getting clearer. Oh! It's a stick! Just a stick! Oh no, hang on! It's a sting insect! It's Stella the stick insect! She's doing yoga! She's doing eagle pose! Wow, this is great! We're off to the park today to go and find Stella the stick insect! Let's begin our story lying in our beds. Lying all the way down, make your body nice and long and relaxed and we're going to pretend that it's a Saturday morning. Ah, bliss! We wake up and we stretch our arms and our legs. Oh. We come up to sit, 
crossing our legs and stretch again. Oh. Then we stand up and we fold all the way forwards, reaching our arms forwards to draw the curtains. Oh, it's a bit rainy today. Let's have a shower in the rain. Standing up, we pitter-patter all over our heads, that rain, all over our bodies and our arms, all over our tummies and our legs. Oh dear, we're getting a bit wet in this rain, so we rub ourselves dry using our hands. That's better. Time to go downstairs and have some breakfast. Down we go, down we go, down we, down we, down we go. We sit down with our legs crossed and we reach up to get the biggest pot bringing it all the way down in front of us. Now we're going to make some porridge. So we take our hand across to our knee and twist around to get our porridge oats. Here they are. Let's shake them in the pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Take your other hand across to your other knee and twist the other way. This time we need to get some milk. So we get our milk and we pour it in the pot. There we go. Now we need to stir it. So we take our legs out wide and we take hold of our stirring stick and we stir it, stir it, stir it. We put that stirring stick down and we take our other stirring stick and we stir the other way. Stir it, stir it, stir it. Oh, it's ready. We cross our legs. We fold forwards, keeping our bottoms planted on the floor, and then we eat up our porridge. Mmm, 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 mmm. Delicious. We sit up nice and tall, and we rub a hand on our tummies, and we pat our heads at the same time. Oh, so, so clever. It's time to go. So we come up to two knees, we take our arms out wide, and we give everyone at home a great big hug. Time to open up the door. We take our leg out to the side, our arm up to the sky, and we fold down to the side. Ooh. Opening the door. Then we close it behind us, two knees together, leg out to the other side, arm up to the sky, and close the door. Ooh. Time to get on our bicycles. We lie on our backs, and we crisscross our fingers behind our heads, lifting up our legs. Then we have to pedal really slowly as we go up the hill. Oh, it's quite hard. Oh, now we're going down the hill. So we go really, really fast. <laughs> we arrive at the park. Let's go on the swings. We stand up and we bend our knees. We reach our arms up high. Ready? One, two, three. Whee! And up. And again. One, two, three, whee! And up. This is great, but shall we go on the slide? Yeah, come on. Sitting on your bottoms, legs out long. Take your hands behind you, point your fingers in towards your bottom. Ready to go on the slide, ready? That was brilliant fun. Now, we see a little lake. Drawing the soles of your feet together, make a big diamond shape with your legs. On this lake, there is a tiny little boat. Turning yourself around, lift up one foot, lift up two, lift up one hand, lift up no hands, and give me a wave. Hi! We row this little boat across the lake, legs out long, take hold of your oar and row. Let's sing our row, row, row your boat song, ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ring, 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 ring. That's the phone. Should we, should we answer? Hello? Oh, there's going to be a bug ball tonight. Ooh, we're invited. Mm, yes, we'd love to come. OK, yeah, see you in a minute. Bye. We put the phone down and we row with the other oar. Picking it up, here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ring, 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 ring. What's the phone again? Can we answer this one? Hello? 
Oh, it's Stella the stick insect. Hi, Stella. Oh, you're in a bit of a pickle. Oh, all right then. Yeah, we'll be there in a minute. Yeah, we'll help. Righto. OK, bye. We put the phone down. Poor Stella, she's in a bit of a pickle. When we get to the banks of the lake, we take big squadgy mud walks. Standing up, coming to the side, ready for a big squadgy walk. Squadge! And back, and again. Squadge! We come to a clearing. This must be where the ball's happening. We find all of the bees tuning up. Crossing your legs. Take your fingers and see if you can close your ears and go... Mm, like a bee tuning up to play its musical instrument tonight. All around, we can see beautiful butterflies. They're going to be doing the decorations for tonight. Drawing the soles of your feet together, hold onto your toes and flutter your butterfly wings. There are also lots of rather wonderful caterpillars wiggling around. Coming onto your bellies, everybody. Hands underneath your shoulders, point your toes back. Oh, yes. I'm just trying out all of the leaves to check that they're going to be tasty for tonight. Mmm, these are really good. Mmm. Oh, it's good we've got the caterpillars doing the catering. Next, we see the grasshoppers in the hopper hair salon having their wings trimmed and highlighted. Laying all the way down on your belly, take your arms out wide, bend up one foot and press it to the sky. Then see if you can use your other foot to hoist it up. Yeah, Sharon, I was just saying, that Stella the stick insect, she's in a bit of a flap at the moment. <gasps> we hear this and we wonder where Stella is. Swapping your legs all the way over now, lift up your other foot. Press it to the sky and hoist it up. Oh, yeah, Stella, she's over on that broken branch. Go see her. We put our foot down and we roll over onto our backs. We take our arms out wide and we lift up our legs. Then we take our legs over to one side and our head over to the other, making a broken branch. We look all over this broken branch trying to find where Stella is. Where is she? See if you can take your legs up and over to the other side now and take your head round to the other side. All of a sudden, we hear a... <laughs> we sit up and we look really carefully and sure enough, we can see her. But it's very hard to see Stella when she's sitting on a branch because she looks a bit like a branch. But now she's crying, we can hear her. There she is, poor Stella. Coming up onto two knees. Take your leg out to the side and take your arm down to the side beside you. Reach up with your top arm, up and over your ear, coming into your stick insect pose. Oh, it's awful. There's no point in me going to the ball because nobody can see me. I'm always camouflaged by everything. Coming to your knees. Oh, Stella. When you go to a party, you should wear really nice, bright party clothes. Then everyone will see you. <gasps> Stella thinks this is a great idea, but we need to do a bit of a wash. So we cross our legs and we bring our hands back behind our heads and we wash Stella's best party clothes. Wisha, washa, wisha, washa, wisha, washa, woo! Wisha, washa, wisha, washa, wisha, wisha, woo. Then we dry them in our special tumble dryer, bringing your fingers in front of your mouth and blow. <gasps> now Stella pops them on and shows them off. Coming up to two knees, arms out wide, drop down onto the other side, take your leg out to the side and stretch your top arm up and over your ear. Oh, I feel all right now. Shall we go? Yes, and there is only one way to arrive at the bug ball, and that is in style, in a lady bug limo. Coming to your knees, fold all the way forwards. Now, crisscross your fingers and rest them on the base of your back. Now lift and lower your elbows, like a little ladybird. We arrive at the party, sitting up. It's in full swing. Everybody's dancing. Stella stands, 
and stiffens up. Um, the problem is I'm really good at copying everybody else because I'm a stick insect. But I'm not very good at dancing, just being myself, being natural. Oh, Stella, you'll be fine. Go on, go and have fun. You'll find your groove. But sure enough, Stella's not very good at just dancing as herself. She just copies everyone else. First, she copies the termites doing the twist. Jump your feet wide and twist. Then she copies the caterpillars doing the caterpillar dance. Coming down onto hands and knees. Press up into your dog pose. Come down to your knees. Drop down to your belly. Roll your shoulders up like a caterpillar. Try it again. Come back to your knees. Tuck your toes. Up to your dog. Back to your knees. Down to your belly and up like a caterpillar. Then she copies the beetles. They're on their backs doing some beatbox dancing. Coming up onto your bottoms, lying down on your back. Now, reach up and see if you can grab your feet. The beetles are having a great time wiggling around, doing their beatbox. <laughs> Stella is very good at copying them all. Yes, she would be so good if she could just dance naturally, be herself, find her own way of tuning into the music. We decide to have a little rest and have a drink. We have some firefly fizz. Now we make a straw with our tongues curling up the sides like this. And we take a big suck in. Mmm, delicious. Now, if you can't do that curling up with the sides thing, do this instead. Mmm, so refreshing and cool in our mouths. All of a sudden, landing in front of us is a fairy god praying mantis. Coming up into a squat position, everyone. Sitting right the way back on your heels, taking your elbows inside your legs, joining your hands together like a fairy god praying mantis. Dearest Stella, wherever you go, whatever you do, never be afraid to be completely you. Trust in yourself, believe and let go. Forget all the others, let your light shine through. And with that, the fairy god praying mantis launches itself into the night. Ready for a jump? One, two, three, Whee! Oh my goodness me, that was awesome. And it seems to have really spoken to Stella. She feels ready to show what she can do. She comes to the dance floor, takes her position, takes her leg out to the side and her stick insect arm to the ground. Then she waves her antennae around and around. And she puts her leg forward and bows to the ground. She comes on up to the other side. Arms up wide down to the ground and leg up and long. She waves it around and around and around before she puts her leg front and to the ground. Stella is amazing when she dances and she's herself. She's captivating. Her confidence radiates. It's wonderful to see. Here comes Steve the spider. Standing up, legs a little bit wider, bend your knees and make your fingers like spiders. Then bring them inside your feet, take them around the back and round the side and sit down. Um, I wondered, um, Stella, <clears throat> he's a bit shy. Um, could I, uh, could I ask, can I dance with you, Stella? Stella comes to her knees. She opens her arms wide and she beams Steve her biggest stick insect smile, giving him a great big hug. Oh, yes, Steve, let's dance the night away. We'd better leave these two love bugs alone. So we sit back and we blow them a kiss. We hop on the back of the ladybug limo, folding all the way down, crisscrossing our fingers at the base of our spine and lifting and lowering our elbows like ladybug winds. Then we find our bicycles back at the park. 
lying on our backs. We crisscross our fingers behind our heads, lift our legs to the sky, and we pedal slowly first up the hill. Ooh, it's quite hard. And then ooh, really fast as we go down the hill. Wow, look everyone, it's really dark. So we stand up and we tiptoe, 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 tiptoe inside back into our bedrooms where we lie down. Ah, oh, blissfully in our beds. Oh, that feels nice. All oh, snuggled up and comfy and cosy lying in our beds. As we lie down, we remember the words of the fairy god praying mantis. Wherever you go, whatever you do, never be afraid to be completely you. Trust in yourself, believe and let go. Forget all the others, let your light shine through. As we remember these words, these wise words, we think about the light inside of us. What colour is your light? Maybe you can close your eyes and see it now. As we feel that light inside of us, we know that when we are just being ourselves, that light shines brightly. It fills us with warmth. And wherever we go, we need never be afraid of what people think because we are just being completely ourselves. Feeling that light inside you now, let's bring ourselves back, breathing into it. Wiggling our fingers and our toes. We give our knees a hug and we roll onto our sides, slowly coming up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, Three, namaste. Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming to see Stella the Stick Insect with me and for coming to the Bug Ball. That was great fun. I hope to see you again soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye bye. <whistles>to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den, your place to feel all calm and relaxed and to help our minds stay healthy and happy. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms, legs crossed and a long straight back, we rest our hands on our knees and take a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouth. Now let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's have some sounds. Ooh, look at these. Lots of great sounds to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel all lovely and relaxed. Oh, a train quietly clickety-clacking along. And a calming rain shower. Oh, it's so lovely being inside when the rain is pouring outside and hearing it go pitter-patter on the windows. I feel all cosy and safe. How does it make you feel, I wonder? Hmm. Now for a smell. Ooh, these look interesting. Flower smell. Hmm. 
dog smell. Hmm. Ah, yes. Let's smell the vanilla. Vanilla is a spice and it helps us feel calm and positive. Popcorn the dolphin loves vanilla ice cream. Have you noticed there's one thought that can pop up over and over again? Especially when we're trying something for the first time. So, just imagine you are trying to do something, anything, balancing on one leg, reading a new big word, lying or sitting still, or solving a puzzle. As you try, often, quite soon after you start, a very little but powerful thought pops into your mind. I can't do this! And we all get this when we try something for the first time. And the best way to make the I can't thought go away is to think, oh yes, I can. The I can't thought is like a little naughty monster who will suddenly jump in and make you feel all weak and annoyed and maybe even frustrated with what you are doing. All he ever says is, Oh, no, you can't. When the I can't monster appears and all these hard feelings start, it becomes even harder to do what you are doing. More thoughts appear. I'll never be able to do this. This is a waste of time. I'm bad at this. And each of these thoughts make it harder to do what you are trying to do. The I can't monster is always ready to jump out when you do something new, something for the first time. He's rubbing his hands together, just waiting for things to get difficult, which they always are when you first try something. So be ready for him. The next time you are trying to do something, See if you can spot the very second the I can't monster pops into your head. When you spot it, smile to you yourself. Because just by spotting it, you will be able to squash it. And the thing that really squishes him is when you say back to him, Oh yes, I can. Then he disappears into a puff of smoke. The more you practice saying, oh yes, I can, the weaker he becomes and you get stronger and stronger. This is a Zen Den master skill. It means turning your I can't thought into a I will keep trying until I can thought. That's called positive thinking and with that you will succeed. Learning to do anything just takes practice. And practice means doing it over and over again. I hope the next time you spot an I can't thought, you remember this. That you can tell the I can't monster, oh yes I can. I know you can. Keep up the practice to become a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den Master. <laughs>